There we go. Ready to roll? Okay. Seems a little out of focus. That's weird. Get into focus, camera. All right. <clears throat> yeah, for those of you joining us uh, via electronic media, you know we are not edited. <laughs> so what you what you are seeing is how we really are, right? Um, so we're going to instead of singing the doxology this morning, we're going to start with the first hymn, and that's number four nineteen, right? Yeah. Love found a way. Does everybody have hymnals? Praise the Lord for that breeze. Yep. <laughs> uh, 
There you go. There are all pretty. <laughs> well, no, angle the camera. Do. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you for the people that are here. <coughs> I um, ask your blessing for all of our efforts as we do our best to walk the walk you want us to. There's times when it's very difficult. And there's weeks where it's very easy as well. I thank you for those weeks. Sometimes it's like a falling off a log. It's easy to do. <laughs> for those weeks, though, when it's really hard, um, I ask for your guidance. I ask for the Holy Spirit to come in and just shake us awake. And shake us to hearing you, hearing your your will, which the Spirit carries. Enlighten us with all with what you want to give us to know. Um, help us not be scared to accept it. That's part of our problem. Our flesh rebels at some of your advice. Our flesh tends to want what it wants, and that's that. Um, you tend to be in spite of flesh, you being of spirit. Help our spirits grow. Help our spirits grow in patience, like yours, long-suffering, like yours, fearlessness, like yours. Of course, we're not God. We understand that. There's a reason for that. But help us be fearless in how the Spirit is teaching us. Um, sometimes it's going to be anti-everything we've known that's good. Because <laughs> a lot of the stuff we've known is utter trash. Help us be ready to throw it away. And help us be ready to make all things new again and walk in you. As we go through the books, of, the books and the stories of Acts, we have to remember who these people were and how you changed them. Peter, not much of an orator, and then suddenly because of the Holy Spirit, he is. And people are listening, and he's winning. He's winning thoughts. He's winning through the power of the Holy Spirit. Changes in other people. Saul of Tarsus how he changed, and how sometimes he remained exactly the same kind of personality he was, which would get him in trouble. Help us not be fearful of the trouble that we get into because of the Holy Spirit. Help us understand that man is going to be against it. Help us understand that worldly powers and organizations and things of that nature are not going to agree whether they like to say so or not. Help us understand your word. Help us understand the words that you gave us in your Bible. Help us remember the teachings of Christ and not necessarily the teachings of an old pastor we used to like. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully they were the same, but sometimes I know they weren't. Uh, because old pastors that we had were of flesh too. And they have good weeks and bad weeks and good days and bad days. But as your task for us here is to be in the world and to tell the good news of Christ Jesus. Paul writes, help us run the race. I say help us have a really great walk. Because <laughs> it is. It's slow sometimes. It's not fast. I think sometimes we think witnessing is a fast thing. And all these people in the book of Acts that are, that are accepting that Christ was Messiah and accepting that he was their Savior. And, and suddenly they change. Well, we, this is only in a few pages. This took some time. And it was a scary time for them, too. 
just like it is for us. I ask that you keep fear away from us. I'm asking that you not make us proud, but we walk in the steps of your righteousness. And we give you the glory for all of it. We don't, we don't accept any for ourselves. Just like the apostles did in the book of Acts. There's a reason this, this book is here in your word. I thank you for the things that the disciples did, the apostles did. I thank you that they screwed up and then they got up again and they tried again. And these were people that were filled with the Spirit and they still screwed up, so <laughs> we're in good company. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your grace. And I thank you for your love. Amen. So that's kind of why I'm doing this, the Book of Acts. We had a fun week last week. <laughs> I don't know. There's the there's the those the cartoons with the uh, guy in the office on his desk, and there's the inbox and the outbox. And the inbox is always like this high, and the outbox got nothing in it. Do you have any portions of scripture that are in an inbox? <laughs> Not portions. <laughs> portions? The majority? Not a portion, the whole thing. My dear rabbi, Dr. Snyder, would sometimes come, come across one of these things. Oh, we start and then you, may, you immediately have to go to the bathroom. I get it. <laughs> Well, the preacher's talking now, so I'm going to go downstairs and play. See you in about a half hour. <laughs> uh. At any rate, um, Dr. Snyder would say, he'd run across a really weird section of the Bible, and he would say, this is just one of those really weird sections of the Bible. <laughs> and he wouldn't go any further with it. Now this is a man who, this is a man who performs surgery on, especially the word in general, the word of God in general, but uh, the Old Testament specifically. Just it, his his uh, teaching and guidance really really helps me a lot um, in a number of different philosophical ways. At any rate. All I know is that I got A's on my papers when, that I gave him, so I must have learned something. No, we don't know in particular why certain things are brought in front of us. We don't know what opportunities we have to witness. Um, we don't know what opportunities we have to show Christ. So to me, that's that's a witness. Um, people that proclaim are you saved? They ask, you know, they they sound like one of those old tracts, right? I don't give them the time of day. I don't. I'm so like the world in that regard. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I've heard it all before. Next, show me. I'm like James in that regard. <laughs> you got faith? Show me. Shut your mouth and show me. How do you react to people? How do you act when things go bad at work? How do you react at the gas pump? Even though prices are going down, thanks to the president, obviously. <laughs> How do you react to people's stupidity? I don't react very well. I don't like stupid. But there we are. I was talking with my colleague Dan's wife last night regarding our trip to Georgia, the Georgia Aquarium. And I was talking about the wonderful people we met. Oh, no, did you stop and see this on the way down there? I go, no, because I was to, we were in Georgia. <laughs> And I wasn't going to stop anywhere I didn't have to. 
This is why we did three days at the aquarium. Second, second largest aquarium in the world. If you ever get a chance to go to the Georgia Aquarium, go. It's incredible. Atlanta. It's in Atlanta. It's in Atlanta. <clears throat> <coughs> Landlocked Atlanta. <laughs> go figure. How many, how many millions of gallons? Of the large, uh, six million gallons. Six million gallons of water in the main aquarium. Amazing. Anyway, um, but we were talking about, I have, a, I have a definite bias. And I know I have a bias, and I'm not supposed to. And I really struggle with that sometimes. Other times I'm just, I'm too tired to struggle with it. But it's something that, you know, I don't have any doubt that God wants to change it. <laughs> it's just, I have, you ever have an issue where the Lord is taking his sweet time with you? You have this behavior problem that you're aware of, and you know you have to fix it, but you don't. No, not where I'm perfect. Yeah, right, sure. Yeah. Well, Bill's perfect, but I'm sure not. Nope. <laughs> so, I mean, when we do communion, I say, you know, let's let's get with God and see what's in the way. Well, that stuff's in the way. So what do we do with it? Especially those of us who like to justify our biases as being reasonable and things of that nature, and God's going, you know, no. <laughs> no. I, I put my, my son in flesh, gave up my glory to be here in flesh with you, Emmanuel, and you're all a bunch of clowns. And I still loved you and went to the cross for you. So that's... How do you figure that? You can't. Not with human logic. It doesn't make any sense at all. Well, it's a great sacrifice. Well, yes, it was a sacrifice in a number of ways. It was an Old Testament sacrifice. It was a Mosaic Law sacrifice. It was a sacrifice of love, one for another, for people who didn't deserve it. You know? What do we do with that stuff? Well, the, the apostles seem to be doing it. Well, Let's look, chapter 13. <clears throat> now there was in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Mananan, or Manan, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul, for the work were unto I have called them. Okay, important names here. Saul and Barnabas. Apparently the Holy Spirit wanted those guys to be a team. Right? Separate me, or maybe not. Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul, for the work were unto I have called them. Who is the Holy Ghost talking to? In the context, I would think it was Barnabas and Simeon, Lucius, or not. This is one of those weird parts. Who is the Holy Spirit talking to? Who he wants to. <laughs> Whoever he wants to. Uh, maybe just a group that was meeting there. Hey? Parts of the church that are in connection with Another word in the church that was at Antioch. Certain prophets and teachers. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul, for the work born to I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So the, the church at Antioch. That's, who's, that's who the Holy Ghost is talking to. The whole church, apparently, or most of them, or these people are on the front lines, remember? So this is this is the early church. This is one of the way, one of the first things. So this is at the church. The people, right? Not the building, but the people, wherever they might have been. And where did they usually meet then? 
In homes. In homes, in their own homes. Different homes. They didn't go to a building every Sunday <laughs> and do this. Right? They met in upper rooms. They met in, you know, catering joints. You know, it's wherever they were. So when they prayed, or excuse me, when the verse 3 again, and when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Spirit, departed into uh, Seleucia. And from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they also had and they had also John to their minister. When they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus. All right. Jesus was a very common name because it's Joshua. How many Joshes do you know? How many have you known in your life? A very common name. Not quite as common as David, I would have been richer, but pretty common, right? So, a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus, and there was a lot of false prophets around, just like now. <laughs> a ton of them. Which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimus the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. All right. Elimus is Bar Jesus, correct? Yes. Elimus is Bar Jesus. Why did everybody have all these names? Well, there was different languages. My, my dad, John, was called Jack for most of his life. Jack was never his name. It's like me, I've got three names. Hey? It's like me, I have three names. I... My wife has three names. Kate, Kathy, Kathy. When I was little, it was Kathy Jo. <laughs> Kathy Jo. <laughs> Variations on it. Amy's kind of hard to goof with, yeah. right? Yeah. Sue is easy to goof with. Sue, Susie, <laughs> Susan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. This deputy, Sergius Paulus, was with who? Uh, Bar Jesus. Hmm? Yeah, he was with the Linus. I guess they were buddies or something. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, Sergius Paul is a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and decided to hear the word of God. Why? Don't know. Holy Spirit. I would bet. Yeah. Holy Spirit moved him. Uh, maybe he heard, he heard some street stuff about them. You know, this is a growing concern. The way, and if these people, if these people are known, you know, oh, those are the guys from. Uh, plus, they were they were in town. They were strangers, right? So there's a little bit of a inquisitiveness about who these guys are. Right? Desire to hear the word of God, but Elimus the sorcerer, so is his name by interpretation, withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also was called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, set his eyes on him, and the trouble started. <laughs> <clears throat> and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou... <laughs> way to go, Paul, way to make friends, right? <laughs> O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to prevent, to pervert the right ways of the Lord? 
And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. Wow. And immediately there fell on him a mist and the darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. So that day, right, for Elias. <laughs> I love this. The Holy Spirit. Right? Peace and everything. Here's Paul. <laughs> you are an idiot. And you're going to be blind for a season. Because you're a false prophet. And you're withstanding this. Meaning what? What does it mean to withstand? Who's got a difference? Um, Hey? Opposing. Opposing. Now, how is he opposing? We don't really know, um, but go ahead. Well, in, in uh, the NIV version, it says, you, you are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Oh, well. So right away, I mean, he was already saying, um, I'm trying to oppose him, trying to prevent, uh, you know, prevent others from hearing him. It also says he's seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Right, purposefully trying to keep him from that faith. The prudent guy, right, that this false prophet is with, wants to hear the word of God. They start to tell him, and this clown acts up. He's like, I don't, and we don't know what way he's doing it. But he's arguing against them, debating them. You know, we don't know how that. We don't know precisely what's taking place there, but we know the word of God isn't falling softly on accepting ears due to this guy. And Paul lets him have it, <laughs> right? Would that this was done more often in church. <laughs> <laughs> I love when I love when people are like, I'm saying something and people are shaking their head and something angry. No! Oh! <laughs> I love that. Because that's what this place is for. Right? It's supposed to be more like a school. What was happening in temple? during the Acts of the Apostles' day. You go to the synagogue, right? Which is not necessarily the same as the temple. I don't let me confuse that for you. Synagogue is more like, what? The temple satellite? It would be more like this, where they got up and they read the Word of God and Synagogue. The synagogues are more like this version of church. The place of teaching. Yeah. The temple was like, I don't know, the headquarters. And the synagogues were like the satellite churches. And that's how that worked. You went, you heard the word, and you talked about it. And you discussed it. And you argued about it. And there was a teaching. Um, environment. So people stand up. Now normally people would wait until a person was done and then stand up and give an, give an opinion. But apparently Linus immediately started standing up when <coughs> excuse me Barnabas and Saul were talking. Oh, full of all subtlety. Oh, trickery. Very, very, ah. You have to parse the words they, they say very, very carefully. Because they serpentine around with their arguments. Government's full of them. <laughs> but government is full of people like us. And we can sometimes be like this, too. 
when we want what we want, sometimes we have a really willfully sly way of going about getting it. It's true. Oh, full of subtlety. And I love the word mischief here. It's like mischief, pranks. No, Kathy, what was your version saying? Um, deceit and trickery. Deceit and trickery, that's what it is. <clears throat> mischief. And perverting the right ways of the Lord. No enemy of all righteousness will doubt not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord. Now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him, on the lioness, a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed. Mm -hmm. I would too. <laughs> <laughs> After I saw a show like that, I would, I would be okay. I'm not going to argue against that. I'm going to. I want to listen more to these two guys, and the Linus can go you know, take a hike, <laughs> right? <coughs> the deputy, verse 12, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. That's an interesting phrase. What does doctrine suggest to you? Teaching. Okay, I think I think we have a uh, we we think of doctrine, and I think we think of paperwork sometimes. Yeah. I know a lot of people, uh, um, and in discussions last night, when I play gigs, sometimes I, I preach the word <laughs> or I discuss Bible with people, right? Because. There's a lot of people that really want to dive into this, but the language stops them. Mm -hmm. right? Because they heard that any version outside of the King James Version is a sinful version of the Bible. They're not. That's stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, well, that's pretty blunt, Pastor Dave. Yes, it is. Saul was. Right? If you have a translation that speaks to your heart, right? If it, if it meets certain biblically scholar or Bible scholarship standards, use that one. Don't use the one that is antiquated and has words you don't understand and screws up your understanding even worse than you know how hard it is to understand Jesus' words sometimes anyway. You want God wanted the word to go to you in ways that you speak it. What do you think we have missionaries go all over the world for? To bring scripture into their own languages, right? We have lots of people, tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of people working on that very thing. Get scripture in the words of the people so that they hear it with their hearts. In their heart language, the one they knew when they were a kid, growing up. You know? Um, so my father used to decry Vatican II getting rid of so many of the Latin masses. He loved to hear the Latin masses. <laughs> and, and Dad actually could speak a little Latin. But I said, is it easier for you to understand in Latin or in American English? He says, well, American English. What do you need Latin for? He says, I like it. He says, okay. This is one of the things I was talking about in my prayer, though. If liking Latin is confusing your understanding of God's word that you should be hearing in English, hear it in English. Be ready to drop the Latin if God wants you to. Well, but I like Latin. No, it's not talking to you the way I want to talk to you. This word. This word. And it's, I like NIV, I like NASB, I like, what? New, New King James. I like King James. I like it. I do. But I know sometimes it's stressful for people because like, why don't you use the NIV or something like that? 
What I try to do is take some of this antiquated stuff that people have heard over and over and over and over and over again and take a scalpel to it so that it's a little more understandable. That's my aim at any rate. That's how I'm guided to use this, this version of the Bible. Doctrine, paperwork. A lot of people think of doctrine as paperwork. Or so legality, or a constitution, or a, we're going against the, con the church constitution. Yes. Yes. Sometimes you do. <clears throat> Well, we shouldn't. Well, sometimes you can't help it, <laughs> right? Where, where is our, where is our choir? Well, the choir is sitting out there, right? We have a committee, a music committee. We do. It's in the Constitution, so we must have one. Guess what? We don't. Okay. We do. We all are on the music committee. Well, were they elected? No. <laughs> well, here's the point. What is the Constitution? It is not the be all and end all. It is a format by which you legislate or manage. That's all the thing is. As brilliant as our Constitution is, and I think. In human writing, it's probably the most brilliant work next to, to Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> it's brilliant. I revere it, but I understand it's a framework to govern, to legislate. Seek out new <laughs> To be guided, to understand. So many don't understand things. Who, who looked up the 17th Amendment a couple of weeks ago? <laughs> the Roe v. Wade thing overturning thing, I was like, no, well, you know what? People are still not understanding the 17th Amendment at all. Well, that's not what the, the 17th Amendment is. Go well, look it up. Don't look at Jesus. Look it up. <laughs> I thought it was the 14th. Huh? I thought it was the 14th. I'm talking about the 17th. All right. Yeah, look it up. <laughs> you realize she's going to. Good. Huh? I know she's going to, which is good. Right? Can, this I, is... can I ask a question about the, what we're talking about here? Mm-hmm. It says that they went out to preach the word of God. Yes. And that they, the deputy brought him in because he desired to hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 12, that he believed and was astonished by the doctrine of the Lord. Yes. Nowhere in the story mm -hmm. does it say what their message was. Mm -hmm. So what was it that they were Why preaching? are you assuming there was a message to say? I'm wondering, I want to define what, what ah, is the by that's doctrine. what we're doing. Thank you. Precisely. Precisely what I'm attempting so to do. So he believed it without actually it being articulated. Well, I'm asking what people think when they hear the word doctrine. Right? Okay. Verse 5, it says uh, they... When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogue. Mm -hmm. right. If mm -hmm. Elimus didn't stand up and interrupt them, the word of God was heard in full as they wanted to tell. My impression, though, is that they were interrupted by Elimus. I'm thinking they used the word withstood in terms of um, some kind of an antagonism, right? Some kind of a uh, interruption. Now, that may not necessarily be so, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. 
Saul and Barnabas may well have said, had their said in, say in full. And then Elimus may have stood up and gave an opposing argument, a rebuttal, if you will. Right? And then Paul rips in, <laughs> Paul rips into Elimus with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the knowledge of the Holy Spirit, and Elimus is blind. Now, this deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. And the teaching about the Lord. The teaching of the Lord or the example of what the Lord's power can do. And these two people preaching the word of God, apparently, they seem to have this power because suddenly the guy I'm with is blind. And he's walking around looking for people to help him. What doctrine was there? Don't oppose God. Or you might make you blind. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like some Old Testament kind of stuff right there. That's pretty Old Testament, right? Do what God says or he's going to strike you blind. Oh. Jerk. No. <laughs> don't be subtle. And don't have tricks all over the place. And don't be anti-God's justice. And righteousness? Don't be like that. There's some symbolism there, too. You know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's sight, you know? It was uh, like this guy was blind. You know? I'm sorry? It was like it was like he was blinded physically, but, you know, the symbolism being that he was blind to the truth that he was speaking. You know, he was speaking the stuff. This is an interesting point. Child of the devil. <clears throat> Was he blind to the truth or did he know it anyway? <clears throat> I mean, he probably knew it somewhat. Do you know people who know the truth about a subject and are adamantly against it anyway? Mm -hmm. Flat earthers. <laughs> Yes, we do. Uh, lots of people. Yes, we do. Lots of different things. Is there, is there mention anywhere of what happened when his sight came back? There's not, is there? Um, I don't know. I will look. I will, don't think, the way things usually work in the book of Acts, things are mentioned and we have no closing. We just move right on to the next thing. We just thing. move right on to the next thing. Right? It's not like law and order where you go, and that's the end of the case, and they solved it <laughs> Never in an hour. Okay, I don't, for a season, how long was the season? I don't know. Summertime, a grow, an agricultural growing season, which is most how a lot of Jewish time is reckoned, the season, how old are you? They didn't necessarily go with years. Right? Well, first of all, they didn't have a Julian calendar yet, I don't think. <laughs> At any rate, we don't know what happens to this guy too much. <coughs> well, the page flipped over. Not seeing the sun for a season, immediately there fell on him a mist and the darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Does anybody have a different translation? The of teaching. That? The teaching. Teaching. <clears throat> teaching about the Lord. I don't know. If I was this deputy, the teaching would have like been, oh, what I just saw though? Wow. <laughs> and then that would have brought to mind maybe some of the teaching I'm thinking doctrine is not necessarily always teaching right 
we cannot ascertain when the deputy heard the word. We cannot ascertain whether it was told in full and interrupted, but by God, he got to see it. Right? Does that make sense? And all of those things in total on this guy is what made him astonished. He might have heard it on CNN before he Yeah, he might, yes. CBN or, you know. <coughs> he, he, been on his way in the car, he turned on WPEL, you know, it's yeah. possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the spirit was working on him. So when he found somebody to lead him by the hand when he was blind, do you think they took him over to Ananias and he went through the whole Saul thing? I'm sorry? They took him over to Ananias and he went through that whole Saul thing. He made him <laughs> blind. That's what, that's what turned Saul around. I don't know. I got blind. I do. See, wouldn't that be a nice ending? That would be. That would be a good one. Law and order. Law order. Solved in an hour. Solved light. Both the both the cop case and the court case. All right, I'll shut up. No, it's okay. I love uh, I used to love I would watch those marathons because during the court half hour mm -hmm. you'd have these clock, clock and then it would the black screen and certain court right and then underneath it would be three months later. But you're seeing it in a half hour and it shows up on the screen so quick you don't it. This case in court took a year and a half. Or this case in court took eight months. Right? The dangers of TV. <laughs> oh, and the cops always have the budget to get the LUDs. They always have the budget to do a DNA test. They always have the, no. See, this is sometimes where the gospel needs to move a bunch of old crap out of the way before you can hear it. Right? This Alimus, he was old crap for his friend. The prudent man. Went, wow. <laughs> I'm astonished at the whole thing I just saw. <laughs> oh. I'm astonished at the teaching. Well, I think that probably taught them a lesson. My father was always saying that. Did that teach you a lesson? Yeah. No. <laughs> when I wanted to be insolent, right? No. When I, be, I just saw the truth, but I was denying it anyway, like especially as a kid. Are you gonna do that again? Yes. Slap. Are you gonna do that again? Yes. <laughs> That's how we are sometimes. That's how we are. I wonder if Bar Jesus, when he got his sight back, went back to doing the same old stuff. I don't know. I well, sure hope not. But you know, the dog is on it. Now, when Paul and his company loosed from Pam <laughs> Paphos, they came to Persia in Pamphylia. And John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Persia, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down to be continued. Now, so again, like last week, what happened to these people? What's the lesson here? No lesson, it's a recording of what happened. <laughs> Do you need a conclusion? We're in it. Do we still have work to do? Yes, we do. Just like these guys. It's an ongoing thing. The story doesn't end in the book of Acts. A story ended on the cross. The story of sin's power over. There's a way to not have that. The story of fear of death, that ended on, on the cross. There's a way not to be scared of it. There's a way to understand it so that you're
comfortable with it because it's part of what God's will is. And you're fine with it. There's the fear of pain. That ended too. There's a way through the Holy Spirit where we'll be a little trepidatious about it, but not fearful of it. It's back in the Old Testament too. What can man do? It's, it's the Psalms. What can man do to me? Well, man can do all kinds of horrible things to you. Yeah, but the Spirit is going to be with me. Is the Spirit really with you? Well, then be scared. If the Spirit is with you, don't be so scared. It's kind of simple. Do you believe that Christ went to the cross for you? It's pretty simple. What doctrine do you need? Do you need, I don't know, do you need to have Bill Hudson suddenly go blind for a season? That would stink. <laughs> He's lo always looking at me. You showed up. Yeah. I don't wish any ill on you at all. <laughs> Not at all. I don't wish you ill on anybody. Well, I lost my See, I got to get rid of that too, because the spirit went not. Nah, eh, 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 Dave, I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm working on it, Lord. And the Lord's going, ah, I know. <laughs> well, sometimes the Lord does put you aside in the bed for a while, like my husband made. Makes you rest. He makes you rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He leads you beside the still water. He anoints your head with oil and goes, sit down. <coughs> enough is enough for right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you hear him? Do you hear his voice? No, don't go there. Go here. But I always go there. Yeah. I want you here. Right. We did, we did a, a Wednesday show, a dramatic reading Wednesday. It was great. The people we had there were very, very fun. Um, how many souls were saved? No idea. We did Daniel in the lion's day. The very short and, well, not really short, and we did the whole story, but it was quick. It's a pretty easy story. Daniel went into the lion's day. He prayed to God. And other Alinuses in Daniel's time tried to get him in trouble for him. And the poor dumb king there is. Don't write an edict that you can't change. This is another thing I love about constitutions. We have amendments in constitutions. That means things change. Sorry if you think the amendment is a rule. It's not. It's how you changed what the constitution was supposed to do in the first place. Better defined rule. Better defined understanding. Right? There's things that change. Darius was tricked into making an edict by law. He couldn't change. He went through all the law books he could go through. He, Darius worked so hard because Daniel had to go to the lion's head. And Darius loved it. Daniel didn't want that to happen. He says, the God you serve, Daniel, I hope will protect you. I really, 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 really hope that. And Daniel was like, he will. Now, I have a really weird t time trying to get a picture of Daniel. If he's human like me, there was doubt. But he overcame the doubt with faith. Daniel did. Or, he never had a doubt. And was that strong in his faith? One or the other. But I'm going to put you in the lion's den. <sighs> okay, not a good day. <laughs> I'm not certain I like that idea, but God will take care of me. Right. I love the saying, trust in the Lord, but grow away from the rocks. Trust in the Lord. 
Let him make you prudent. Be astonished at the overall doctrine he's already described to you. And walk blessed. And walk ready to show the grace he's shown you. See, that's the lesson I need. And I have good days with that. Unfortunately, more bad days than good. Bless your efforts. Bless your listening to him. Bless, what, bless you for whatever struggles you're going through. Because there are a lot of alliances out there telling you different stuff. And if I could, I'd blind them all for a season. But that would cause a lot of traffic accidents and plane accidents. And so I'm not going to wish that. The next person you talk to, help them be astonished by doctrine or by the good news of Christ Jesus. Heavenly Father, bless my priests here. Bless my flock and bless their shepherd because wow, does he need it. Help us be more like Jesus. Amen. Uh, we are going to have a very, very short business meeting. I hope it's really short. <laughs> um, regarding the service contract on the furnace, there, I said it right. Guess what, Steve? You're up. I'm up. Not yet, but we're going to do our gym. We're going to do our gym. Don't be so ready to take over yet. <laughs> I'm ready to take over at any time. He says, fortunately. He's like, come on. And of course, the one I was going to sing happy birthday to is not in the room at the moment. He's like, he's like Kamala Harris. He's like, no. So, yet? I've got yet a little help. <laughs> yeah. This isn't church business necessarily, but uh, we are having a little get together for Rowan's birthday today at 2. So everybody is welcome to come. To Bruce A. At Bruce A. Bruce A. So, um, and it's you know, kind of casual, a little bit of cake and ice cream, maybe some veggies and fruit and that kind of thing. So, but two o'clock, and we're holding it in the basement of the church, so we're not in the hot sun and so on. We're going to be in a cooler space. Okay. Uh, so our last hymn is number 420, Christ Liveth in Me. And again, if you may stand if you'd like to.
For those that have to leave, Father, help them remember that Christ lives in them and the Spirit is in them. For those who have accepted the reality of what your Son did for them, help us as we uh, go out in a very strange world, on a very new path sometimes. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> And those okay. watching who know our granddaughter, Rowan, can you believe that she's going to be 11 tomorrow? I can hardly believe it. So. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's impossible. Time goes by fast. That's impossible. Yes. 11.